Some of you may have seen this video in my last YouTube posting of the flat plate being pushed through still air. I've been running a lot of these simple test cases to try and gain some confidence in my simulation software so that I know that it's putting out reasonable results and I can use it to test wind turbine uh, designs in the future. Today I'm going to take that same plate and I'm going to add some wind coming from the left and going to the right. The plate is still the same size. It's 25 centimeters wide by, let's say, a meter high. Uh, it's a two-dimensional simulation, but you have to pick a length if you're going to calculate forces. Uh, the center of rotation from the center of the plane plate is 24 inches, which is about 0.6 something uh, meters. I don't know why I mix metric system in English, but I did. Um, the plate moves at 15 miles an hour, and the wind will also move at 15 miles an hour from left to right. This first movie is going to show the airspeed. Blue is still air, and red is fairly fast moving air, 18 meters per second. There's some sort of simulation glitch at about 45 degrees. I think it might be triggered by going from stall angles to lift angles, but I doubt that it's supposed to be that drastic. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. At this point, the plate's going directly against the wind. Okay, that movie was air speed. Now I'd like to show air pressure for the same motion. The pressure calculation is a little finicky. And it takes a little while for a pressure to stabilize because the air has to get moving. And zero pressure is defined at the end of the wind tunnel, so it does vary a little bit uh, in the middle of the wind tunnel where the test subject is. In this movie, I'm also showing the flow lines, which are the white lines. They generally show you which direction the air is going. Okay, so seeing the swirling air is cool and everything, but it really doesn't help me know if a wind turbine is going to work or not. So what I need is some real numbers, and fortunately this software can put that out too. This is a plot of torque versus time, which I converted into rotation angle. Uh, basically, it starts out at a uh, torque of zero newton meters because the plate and the wind are going at exactly the same speed and no force is being exchanged. And then as the plate rotates into the position where it's going exactly against the wind on the first round, it's seen uh, negative 35 newton meters, which means we have to put 35 newton meters of torque into it to keep it moving at that speed. The spikes you see in the graph came from those uh, glitches that happened at those two specific angles. And I'm not sure about their cause, but they actually do affect the data but for a really short time. The next interesting point in the torque graph is that about 300 degrees where uh, the plate is starting to go with the wind again and it actually uh, starts producing some energy. The wind pushes the plate even though the plate is moving at the same speed as the wind supposedly. So I was going to go into the data and check out what actually is happening there. This is a still shot of a point where the plate is actually being pushed a little bit by the wind. 
as you can see the plate is going past this little mini tornado that it created earlier and I guess I can believe it might be getting a little bit of a push from that thing. Also the plate is at an angle to the wind and it might be kind of like a sailboat is able to sail faster than the wind. So back to the torque graph. Um, during the first round, uh, things were actually pretty smooth in the torque. It's kind of as you expected, you know, zero torque going with the wind, fairly high torque going against the wind, and it smoothly transitions. Uh, things go to heck on the second round. Uh, the torque gets almost doubles. Uh, it takes twice as much force to push that plate through the air on the second round. And I was going to go in and take a look at that, what's going on there. So here we are, zoomed in on the time and position of where the torque starts going crazy. As you can see, what's happening is we're spinning up a whole bunch of little vortexes and uh, turbulence, and we're putting a lot of energy into getting that air moving. This movie is showing the air speed. This movie shows the pressure for that same time and location. And one thing you might notice is as the air starts spinning, it creates these low pressure zones. And I think at times those low pressure zones are connected right to the back of the plate and it's sucking it back. So I guess I can believe the, uh, the force required to push that plate forward would really go up. Uh, so far, I think I believe the results of the simulator program. So far I've been pretty happy with the open foam program. It's got its share of bugs and uh, kind of difficult to find uh, documentation on it sometimes, but I think it's going to be very useful. Thanks for watching.